Hello and God bless you, my Patreon family. I thought I would do um, just a couple things on the Sunday readings for and with you um, while it's still light out so that you can actually see me better. And I'm sitting here, I recorded a podcast for two weeks from now about Our Lady of Sorrows. So that's why I have all of this with Our Lady of Sorrows, but I thought I'd sit here because um, it's the best lighting. So you can look at the perfect lady who lived the Beatitudes perfectly, right? Today is the Feast of um, All Saints and everything that we love about any and every saint, Our Lady lived in perfection even better than they did. Um, all of the virtues of the saints, if you put them together, don't even touch the majesty of what the Lord did in his masterpiece in the heart of the Blessed Mother. So we ask her to help us to look at um, her heart as a light um, that can kind of help purify our heart and conform our heart um, because as we conform our heart to hers, she conforms our heart to Jesus, right? She is perfectly conformed to Jesus. Her immaculate and sorrowful heart is perfectly conformed to Jesus' sacred heart. And that's the goal of our life, is to be a saint. Every one of us is called to be a saint. And to be a saint means to live heroic virtue. It doesn't mean to bilocate or do miracles. I'm sure you all know that. To be a saint means that you're patient when you don't want to be patient, that you're generous when you have a temptation to be selfish, that you're humble when you feel that pride build up, right? And the keys that Jesus gives us to grow in virtue this way are in the gospel today, which is the Beatitudes. So let's start with a prayer. And I always like to offer this prayer so the Holy Spirit comes and touches our hearts. But then also, as a prayer, I pray with you for my ministry. Because you're a very important part of my ministry financially. I can't do it without your help. Um, and I ask you to join me in prayer that others become generous. Um, because a little bit more a month would be very helpful. Um, and starting in January, I may be taking foster children for um, respite care for a while. And so we'll see how, if that is an extra burden or a help financially, I don't know. But oftentimes you provide things and there's gas and there's diapers and there's things that you have to um, come up with. So we just, we pray that the Lord provides. Um, and I want to really thank you again. Like I cannot... Thank you enough for your help to me. Um, you know, I lived, unlike 99.999% of the world, I lived my entire adult life on the providence of God. You know, even parish priests or people who work um, in the missions with um, a religious community, they get a stipend. They, you know, their expenses are paid and then they have something. I never had anything. Um, and Jesus took care of me and I was fine and I was happy and either I had food or I didn't or I had stuff, you know, or didn't. And he made me very content with that. Um, but being in the world, there are situations that have come up that I've needed, you know, financial help. And um, to do ministry costs money. And... I am speaking to you as someone who doesn't have insurance. I've never had the luxury of a doctor of, of insurance like that. Um, I don't have, you know, my car is 20 years old. If it breaks, I don't have savings. I don't have um, retirement. That's a joke. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen when I get old. But, um, but what you give me helps me be able to help other people right now. And I believe if we live in the present moment that the Lord will take care of us. He always takes care of us. He's taking care of the saints. And when you give your life as radically to him as I have, just giving everything to him. I didn't get married. That's all I ever wanted was to be married with children. And I gave that up and took Jesus as my husband so that he could use every part of my heart and my body and my mind and my soul to glorify his Father. And 
you know, I, I, even my job, I work for so that I have a place that's safe, where I can clean, where I can live. Um, but it, it, it just, you know, doesn't even barely add up every month. Um, and coronavirus really took anything that I had in savings. So I appreciate you. I appreciate a dollar a month. I appreciate $10 a month. I really appreciate if people can do more, you know. Um, I appreciate people who donate once. I appreciate people who can do something monthly. Um, but it's something I've always hated talking about is money. And I used, you know, I've always worked for free. I don't like people to ever think that my love and my gift is dependent on money. But we live in the world and, um, and, it's very helpful. And I just want to let you know, I'm not misusing it. I never, ever eat at restaurants. I never go to movies or concerts or things. I don't do anything for myself that way. <laughs> um, it's really all for the glory of God. So thank you. And let us pray together that God bears fruit through your generosity, that through the loaves and the fish that you give and that I give, that he sends miraculous grace to multiply it. So we pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, our Father, we thank you for these people that you have brought to me, that you have tapped on the shoulder, that you have asked to help me. And I ask that you repay them abundantly, that not only do they not feel the sacrifice they give to me, but that they're repaid a hundredfold for their generosity and helping me to live the life you've called me to and to do the work that you've asked me to do. I ask that you bear fruit, not only in like physically getting books to Pakistan, but that in the hearts of everyone who receives those books, they have grace from our prayer to be changed. That the people who pray the rosary with me in the morning are, are touched and changed. That those who watch the podcasts or who encounter anything else, the, the, you know, the other book that is coming out at Lent, the books I am writing, the art, the music, um, and the, just the little other things that I have to do for people along the way, that their hearts are changed. And I ask you to bless my prayer as I pray with um, my sisters that are here. And hopefully you'll bring us some brothers. <laughs> But I ask you to hear our prayer because we are your weak little children who can do nothing and give nothing that you haven't already given to us. And we ask you to speak to us about the readings today, to inspire us to be holy. And we unite together under the mantle of Our Lady. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Good Remedy, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I just want to reflect on the gospel today, which is from Matthew as the Beatitudes, although they're present in several of the gospels. And what do they say? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Thus they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. And we see here how what Jesus proposes to us that we're called to live is opposite than what the world would think, you know? In another one of the Gospels, this is translated, happy are the poor, happy are the mourning. 
Where do we find that happiness? Where do we find that blessedness? It's in imitating those footsteps of Jesus on the cross. And if I had a longer period of time, I could do a whole hour-long podcast on how Jesus lived the Beatitudes crucified. How it's Mary's heart pierced with all of these swords that are being pierced with the Beatitudes, right? They're what make her beautiful. They're the jewels, the pearls that make her beautiful. And they hurt. It's, it's difficult to live. Blessed are the poor in spirit. What does that mean? Yes, it means those who give up extra riches in life and choose poverty. But poor in spirit, more than that, is um, a humility of heart, a gentleness of heart, where, you know, it is so much in the human nature to judge people or to be harsh, to be prideful, to be selfish, to have that little edge. You know, you've, even the gentlest souls feel that temptation come up sometimes to be competitive, right? To, com- you know, to step on somebody else to look better. And Jesus says, blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who are humble. Blessed are those who know that they're just weak children of God that receive everything they have from the Father. Blessed are the meek, those who don't get angry. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. When the Lord allows us to suffer, he's making our heart similar to our ladies and similar to his own. It's a blessing. And we just pray for the grace to suffer well, right? Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land, right? It takes a great strength It's not weakness to be meek. It takes a great strength to hold your tongue when you don't want to, right? Or to not defend yourself when you're falsely accused. It takes a great meekness and a strength of heart, of courage, to trust that the Lord will take care of that. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Righteousness, it says it here in the New American Bible, the righteousness means those who are seeking the will of God, right? It's to do the will of God. Well, he says, blessed are you who hunger and thirst for the will of God to be done. You know, justice doesn't mean like that you're hurting people or you're condemning people. Righteousness, justice means that God's will is done, that there's an order that's followed. And he wants us to hunger and thirst for his will to be done, right? For fiat to be that breath of our heart. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Forgive and forgive and forgive. Be merciful. You know, even if somebody does something to you that seems very obviously against you, always try to realize that they don't see it the way that you see it. And that they might not have the grace that you have, right? Like say something frustrating happens. God can give you grace to be patient that he's not giving someone else. Maybe they didn't sleep last night. You know, maybe they're really attacked by the evil one. So they just don't know what they're doing. But he wants us to be merciful, not only in the way we act and speak towards people, but the way we think about people, right? And if we're forgiving and we're merciful and we're loving, he'll be merciful to us. And, you know, mercy is in word and in act, but it's also in like alms. It's, in, it's what you're doing. You're being merciful by contributing to my ministry. And to the degree that you're merciful to me, God is going to be merciful to you and provide what you need. I've always seen that over the years. When I just have a few dollars left and I give it to the poor person on the corner instead of buying a cup of coffee, right? Or even sometimes, you know, paying a bill. It's like, I know I don't have enough. So here, I will generously give you everything. Then suddenly there's a knock at the door and somebody provides, right? Or I'm hungry and I don't have dinner that night. But God blesses me in that. Those who are merciful, God is merciful to you. Blessed are the pure of heart, the clean of heart. 
He wants us to be clean in our bodies and in our minds, in our words, but also in our heart, in our intention. God looks at the heart. Is your intention to be pure and holy? Is your intention to inspire divine love and not human lust or human you know, power? He wants us to have pure hearts like a child that are just free and open and loving that easily give that smile to the needy soul and then can go on, right? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. You always want to give peace to other people. So even if your heart is in a panic, take that panic about whatever situation that is and offer it up to Jesus in union with the cross and ask him to give other people peace because you're suffering a lack of peace. You know, when you're in a hard situation where there's division or fighting, you can offer up that uncomfortability or like hearing a story about somebody's life that's difficult that you don't want to hear. If you do that, you can be an instrument of peace to them. You offer up that pain. And then God, by putting peace in your heart, is then going to put peace in the hearts of the people you're offering it for. And then it spreads out to the whole world. Peace begins in the heart. Blessed are they who are persecuted for their sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When you are persecuted for being holy, for following the Beatitudes, for speaking the truth, for loving somebody that other people might not love, God blesses you. And blessed are you when they insult you when they persecute you, when they utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven, for they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You're in good company. When people lie and calumniate you, it's awful. It's awful. And sometimes it's like you feel like you're powerless to speak the truth or to tell. I mean, it's an awful thing. But the Lord says you don't have to worry about it. When people say bad things about you or when they persecute you and they go behind your back to ruin what you're doing, when they say evil about you, especially when it's not true, rejoice and be glad. Even when they think bad about you. Because God is going to bless you for that. And we just pray that he remedies their hearts so they come to see truth, so they come to see love, so that he can heal those relationships. But even if it doesn't happen on earth, we pray it happens in heaven. So we take this as our, um, as our staff this week to climb that mountain, right, up to, with the Lord. We take the Beatitudes as our staff. We take the cross as our staff. And we trust that even if it's heavy sometimes, that God says it's, it's the source of our blessing, right? And so like maybe it's heavy to carry the cross up a mountain, but when we get thirsty, it opens up and gives us drink. When we feel like we're going to fall, you know, it, it strengthens us. The cross is a beautiful staff. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And let's say one Hail Mary together for the fruitfulness of this ministry, that God blesses each one of you, and that he sends many more donors, both to my Patreon account and directly to the GoFundMe for the Urdu book drive. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Good Remedy, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, and I am praying for you every day, and um, I ask you to pray for me. Thank you.